you know that, um, you know, I'm getting serious about what I'm going to talk to when I'm doing a video in my nightgown. I just got out of the shower. It's like 1030. I've been taking care of my little sick two year old all day. And, um, yeah, I'm in my nightgown because I'm going to go to bed after this. Um, but I just wanted to have a little bit of a confessional from a food addict. Um, cause my mind is like full of so many thoughts as I've been just kind of reflecting about kind of where I have been for the last couple of months, where I'm planning to be starting in August. And so much of it is just like tied to having an addiction to food. So this video is 100% about me. Um, I can assure you that there is nothing subliminal or like there's not a secret message. So don't go looking for it <laughs> in this video other than I'm just going to have some real chat about my addiction to food. Stephanie, Stephanie's addiction to food. So, um, last October, I made the decision to cut out wheat and to adapt a lower carb, higher fat lifestyle. That worked amazingly for me. The decision to cut out wheat was not tied to my decision to go low carb, high fat. It was tied to a year plus of intense research. And I'm not talking like WebMD. Oh, hey babe, you can come on in. Um, intense research about Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which I have, it's an autoimmune disease. And what effects wheat has on your gut, your body, your autoimmune disease, the body's immune response, you body's ability to cope when it is exposed to gluten. So I just knew that that was going to be a really big decision. Those two things going wheat free and low carb high fat, they went hand in hand in the most amazing, beautiful way possible. I didn't do it because I was trying to lose weight or, well, I mean, I was trying to lose weight, but that's, that wasn't the reason that the reason was tied to my autoimmune disease. Um, and then I found out I was pregnant and right now I'm 17 weeks pregnant and, um, I've had terrible morning sickness. I've not felt like myself for a few months. Um, it has been really hard on me and I hate to be a whiner because I am so incredibly thankful to be pregnant. Um, and I would go through this again. I, if, if I was young enough to have like six children, <laughs> I would go through this six more times. And I mean that like sincerely when I say that, but it has been really hard on me physically. It's been hard on me emotionally, which has been hard on me mentally. And I think that I've had a little bit of um, like prepartum depression that I've been dealing with. Um, my energy has been crap. My ability to cope has been crap. <laughs> um, just my ability to like handle stress has been so much lower. So I have eliminated so many things out of my life to help me cope with just feeling so sick all the time and just not feeling like myself, not having energy. So what happened during this period of time is I kind of just gave up. I was advised under the advice of a doctor to stop following a high fat, low carb slash keto type of diet um, during my pregnancy, but encouraged to track, not gain excessive amounts of weight, to exercise, to eat balanced. So what happened is once I started eating more carbs, especially in the morning, and I had targets that I've been trying to aim for, I started to really ask myself, does it really matter if the carb is coming from oats or wheat? Does it really matter if it's coming from my $7 loaf of bread made out of like blood sugar spiking flours or maybe a lower glycemic index whole wheat bread or a whole grain bread? And, um, I was on vacation, sick as a dog, and I had wheat for the first time in like eight months, I think it was. I, I don't know exactly how many months it was. That was back in June. 
And at that point, I just made the decision, okay, until I feel better, like, I'm just going to relax on my diet a little bit. Not, not my portions, I'm still going to track, but I'm going to relax on the things that I'm choosing to put into my body, including wheat. I didn't feel sick. I didn't have like terrible gastrointestinal explosions going on. Um, and I wasn't overdoing it. I wasn't binging. I wasn't overeating on the carbs. Um, I was still very conscious of the amounts of which I was eating. However, with that said, it opened up a whole Pandora's box of food choices that, um, that are also tied to my food addiction and I don't think that I really had like a game plan to deal with that other than track and not binge but it's opened up like so many more like temptations for me to eat things that aren't like the healthiest of choices and to eat them more frequently like I'm all about having you know your treat or you know something that you like wait a long time for and then you have it every once in a while but because I have an addiction to food it is not the same as like say my husband like we go out for a nice meal he eats more than usual there's there's like not an emotional consequence whereas for me it, it almost doesn't even matter how much of something I eat if it's tied into my food addiction which is only something that I can know and experience and feel and understand then there's guilt there's worry that I'm gonna binge there's um, shame that I ate something like that and so forth and so um, I've been having to deal with that just because I've been eating wheat um, and I have had the realization that I need to cut it out and I'm feeling good enough and better enough that I feel up to cooking now, I feel up to eating more vegetables, and I do feel capable of doing that. Um, I've also known that I need to wait until I get a couple things over with <laughs> in life um, before I take on something that is going to require my full attention. Because let me tell you what, I'm a lot lazier now with my like mental attention to food because I'm not cutting out wheat. I don't know why, but I know that it's just as easy to like microwave a sweet potato and cook a chicken breast. I know that, that it's just as easy as like, I don't know, we'll say ordering pizza. Like it would take the same amount of time to go get pizza or cook a sweet potato and chicken. I know that, <laughs> but um, I, I've just been just more lazy in my food and it has, it has, um, it has kind of messed with the addiction side, the stress, the guilt, the shame. Um, so there's been a few things that I have made like a very conscious decision not to do, even though I've been having wheat. And I just want to kind of share like the perfect example. So we, I'm going to be gone for 10 days and I'm going to be in a place and around a lot of people um, for this week um, that it like the whole being there everything I have been worried about it for months because I know there are so many triggers that like trigger deep deep feelings of fear of negativity, um, of feeling judged, of feeling not good enough, um, of feeling totally annoyed and irritated, and feeling um, like I don't fit in, like this is not, this is not me, feeling like I have to conform, um, feeling like it's not safe to be myself. And um, there's just a lot of emotions that I know I'm going to have to deal with for the next 10 days. And it's going to be a road trip and I know that there's going to be a lot of good things happening too. And 
normally this would be a time that like I would make a batch of like treats to take on the road and to take when we arrive to like share with everybody but this is the perfect example of you know even though I have let some things back into my diet that are kind of like messing with my addiction I will not bake chocolate chip cookies I I will not I will not bake them will I eat them well, I mean, I guess if, if somebody brought one to me right now while I'm still choosing to have wheat, it, it'd be hard to say no, but I have made the conscious decision not to have wheat and sugar in combination because I know that just the wheat by itself is bad enough. Having it in combination with sugar for me is disastrous. I have had it one time since June and it was at a birthday party, a very safe environment, something that I was, it was planned ahead. I knew it was coming. It was fine but I don't want to give myself any other opportunities to like chance it to risk it I it's just I'm not gonna go there um, I don't trust myself right now um, I still have enough respect for my addiction that there are there are some things that I will remain abstinent from now the wheat okay I kind of like got lazy I got kind of complacent about that but at the same time I didn't totally check out um, and this is like the confession of like somebody with a real food addiction like there's so much more thinking and um, emotions that are tied to food and eating than somebody who doesn't truly have an addiction to food so for me I'm not going to find a substitute for chocolate chip cookies. I'm not going to make some that are gluten free. I'm not going to buy some that are gluten free. I'm not going to bake them. I'm not going to bake them and then take them to somebody. I'm not going to bake them and have them in the car while I'm driving for six hours. Like for me, that would be the most irresponsible, like denial thing that I could do because I know that like that is one food that every single time has gotten me into trouble. I love cookies. I love chocolate chip cookies. The memories, the feelings that I have when I eat them, they taste delicious. And it's not that I think that like a cookie, but the whole process, the baking, the, the smells, the oven, the cookie sheets, the dough, like everything, it's a really powerful trigger um, for me. And so I'm just, I'm not gonna do it in my house. I'm not gonna have it be part of me going into a really, like the lion's den for my food addiction. So what's happening is um, starting August 1st, once I get back, the wheat's gone. Like I've already made this decision a while ago. I have a feeling that part of the fatigue that I've been feeling is connected to the wheat. So I'm hoping that once I cut the wheat out, that I go back to having a little bit more um, spring in my step, if you will. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that some of the mental fog and a little bit of the depression that I've been having, just the lack of motivation, also subsides once I get rid of the wheat. Because the first time I cut out the wheat, all those things happened, but I was also eating a lower carb, high fat um, diet, and that's kind of a natural result of eating that way. Um, so I don't know. We're going to see how I feel. But come August 1st, those things are going to be gone. But I, I can guarantee you that there will not be, um, somebody's had the most brilliant name for it. They called it a food funeral. Like before, I, I'm so guilty of this. Like every time I'd be like, okay, starting over just like the binging and like, okay, this is the last time I'm going to have this. This is my last chance to have that. And so yeah, there's a part of me that's like, oh, well, you better make your chocolate chip cookies or you better make your sugar cookies with the pink frosting or you better make your whole wheat honey bread or you better make this, all these things that have wheat. Oh, yeah, the wheels have been turning. Like, I'm not denying that. I'm just saying I respect my addiction enough that I'm not going to go there, even though it's so tempting. Like, OK, I'm cutting out wheat. So, OK, what else can I have? Like, is there anywhere else that I want to go? Like my my brain, like the wheels are turning totally turning but I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna have any like last hurrah it's just gonna make the transition worse and I don't want that like I already feel crappy enough and like fragile <laughs> enough as it is I, I don't need anything else to fight so anyway I'm sure this video is gonna be really long I don't even know if it's still recording 
um, I have such little space on my phone. So um, that's it. I'm just sharing my my um, thoughts on my food addiction and to let you guys know that come August 1st, it's going to be wheat free. Um, and which just means that I just have to plan more and I already have a plan. I've already made all of my dinners. Um, I have a menu plan up until December 1st. Um, so it's going to be fine. It's, it's, it's going to be fine. It's just going to take a little bit more work and a little bit more focus. And it's something that I, I think will benefit me in the long run. And again, the wheat for me, the decision to cut that out is always tied to my autoimmune disease and me just trying to not let that have a negative effect on me more than it needs to because it already pretty much sucks to have Hashimoto's and have thyroid problems and I'm pregnant so all of it is totally magnified <laughs> um so I don't I don't need any more symptoms to deal with I have enough symptoms already um anyway thanks for this um time with me in my my nightgown notice this one doesn't have long sleeves because it's summertime and i guess i'll uh see you next time i just